a new one and forgot to move it over. Okay, so then our PCO2, we've got um, 45 to 35. And we write it that way because it's easier to um, do our, find out which one it is. Mm -hmm. Then what's HCO3? 22 to 26 uh, millimoles per liter. 22 to 26. 22 to 26. Per liter. And then your PO2 is just your oxygen. Mm -hmm. Or partial pressure of oxygen. And what do we like that to be? Um, 85 to 105. 85 to 105. And so our pH is going to be um, your Hydrogen atoms, ions. And our PCO2. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Our HCO3 is our bicarbs. And your PO2 is just your partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, so for your normal blood gases, I like my oxygen at 100, but 90 will do. See, for me, that one's always been super easy because my kid has asthma, and so he has to, you know, get his done every time he's sick. And, mm -hmm. and so 85 to 105 for me just always works because I know that it needs to, and I think below 85 is um, where they keep them hospitalized. Actually, I think generally before nine, below 90, they or, um, they start thinking, okay, well, is this normal for them? And then 85 is where they're like, okay, you're staying at the hospital. Right. So that one's always been pretty easy for me anyway. PCO2, it says half of 90. So if you, have, if you start it with your oxygen, I like my oxygen at 100, but 90 will do. Half of 90 is at 45. And so 35 to 45 is your, so you can, you can probably say that it's, you know, a little less than half. A little less mm -hmm. than half of your oxygen would be your carbon dioxide. And then your mm -hmm. bicarbs are half of that. So 35 to 45 go down to a little more than half, 22 to 26. And then your pH. Oh no, I always remembered pH for whatever reason, but we need to put over here. So if it's seven, if it's less than 7.35, is it acidosis or alkalosis? I'm sorry? If it's less than 7.35? Um, it's acidic. Acidosis, and then over at seven, greater than 7.45. Oh, good. Alkalosis.
And then for respiratory? Um, so the higher it is, it's acidic, and then the lower it is, it is basic. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to write them out. So your decrease in bicarb is going to be metabolic and your respiratory is going to be an increase in, um, in your CO2. Do I remember that correctly? So your bicarb. Well, then, it's all smarter. And I think I used to have a nice little like, chart for these. Let me find it. So if BCO2 is going the opposite to the pH, it's respiratory. And if the bicarbs are going the same direction as pH, it's metabolic. So if your bicarbs are increased. If your bicarbs are increased, it's alkalosis, so Al metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis, and what if they're decreased? Metabolic acidosis. My carbs are increased. Alkalosis or acidosis? Alkalosis. Yeah, increases alkalosis, yeah. And then metabolic acidosis. Okay, so if the bicarbs are increased, we got alkalosis. Write them both ways. Then worry about whether or not it. Sorry, this computer hates me. And then respiratory.
Finally got it. Okay, so now we got respiratory. So if your carbon dioxide is going the opposite to the pH, then it's respiratory. If it's going lower, you mean? Because they explain it differently than I learned it. If the primary ca uh, carbon dioxide is increased, then it's, um, oh, it does go opposite. Yeah. If it's increased, then it's acidosis. And if it's uh, the CO2 is decreased, it is alkalosis. Yeah. Um, pH. And metabolic is bicarb. Okay, so if your PCO2 is increased, it's alkalosis. No, wait. Acidosis. My bad. Okay. And P. Going to decrease. Going to be your respiratory. Alkalosis. And pH. Normal means full compensation. Yep. And now for let's do a couple. I think it's got a couple in here. So you're, oh, let me put these in too. I, th I always had a hard time with these. So. Compensatory for, for metabolic is your lungs. And then your compensatory for your um, for your respiratory is going to be renal. That's the one I think I always um, didn't put for me. Is a renal. It's so given. Um, for example, if something's going on with your kidney, that's when your lungs start kicking in and either it'll try to go, it'll make things more, your P, try to balance your pH by going more basic or more acidic, right? Yes. So and then vice have, versa. Yeah. And it'll, so if you're, um, if you have respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, it's your renal. And so it'll overcompensate by either increasing or decreasing your bicarbs. So even though like your CO2 has more to do with your being in respiratory, your um, your bicarbs will go off when, like they, they try to overcome the site either higher or lower based on the acidosis or alkalosis um, with the opposite effect. So acidosis, your bicarbs will increase, but that's all with the, with like the compensations. And so I don't think that they really go in like that in depth on 
the boards or anything like that as far as the compensation methods other than just renal compensation for respiratory and lung compensation for metabolic. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as the diseases or, or, you know, conditions, conditions and stuff like that, how, like, emphysema, I don't really know what that is. I think that's when it's, um, super hard to breathe and I'm going to say it, it uh, suffocates the lungs, like something with that surfactant. Lung condition that causes shortness of breath in people with emphysema. The air sacs in the lungs, the alveoli are damaged. Over time, the inner walls of the air sacs weaken and rupture, creating larger air spaces instead of many small ones. Yeah, so it has to do um, with air sacs. Um, but I, I think we should definitely um, go over like the disease states with them and um, and the things that affect them. Yeah. Like analysis, having bubbles, and what that does to each of the... The lab results, right? Yes. Okay, so for your disease state specifically... Did you want to recap with um, Eden about what we just yes. went over right quick? Yep. So we've got acidosis is a pH lower than 7.35. Alkalosis is a pH higher than 7.45. Um, your PCO2 is your partial pressure of carbon dioxide, and it goes your 45 to 35. Um, and where bicarbonate is um, metabolic acidosis if it's, if it's lower than 22, and metabolic alkalosis if it's greater than 26. And your partial pressure of oxygen is 85 to 105. So generally they like it to be like 98, 99, 100. Your metabolic has to do with your bicarbs. Um, going, or if your bicarbs are going with the pH, it's metabolic. Um, so Increased bicarbs is metabolic alkalosis, and decreased bicarbs is metabolic acidosis. And then your respiratory is your carbon dioxide, and it goes opposite of the pH. So your PCO2, if it's increased, is respiratory acidosis, and if it's decreased, it's respiratory alkalosis. And if you have a normal pH, that means you have full compensation. Uh, your respiratory compensatory mechanism is renal. And for your metabolic, the compensatory mechanism is your lungs. I think we got to put our carbon dioxide one in that night. So if your carbon dioxide is decreased, I forgot. Sorry. If it's decreased, what is it? Acidosis. That one goes usually goes opposite your pH, so that one's going to be your alkalosis. Oh, okay. And I think that's why we write it. Oh, did I? No, I put it right on there. Okay. And respiratory. Oh, it worked out. And then so respiratory. If it's greater, is acidosis. And so for metabolic acidosis, what are your results going to look like? Um, you're going to have a, um, a low pH and a low pH. bicarbonate. So yeah. it's going to be a bicarbonate deficit. 
So a decrease HCO3. And so you'll have, um, it can be seen in diabetic ketoacidosis. Where you have an increased acid production. And then uh, renal disease. Long diarrhea, and that's due to your your um, excessive bicarbonate loss. And late salicylate poisoning, salicylate. Poisoning will put you in metabolic acidosis. And so metabolic alkalosis, the result going to look like. So if it's metabolic, it's going to be your bicarbs, right? Is it going to be a bicarbonate increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. Increase, because these go with the pH. So that um, NaHCO3 infusion, uh, or what, sodium bicarbonate infusion, have y'all seen any questions on that? <laughs> Meaning, I don't think it's that necessary to write if you haven't really seen anything on it. Do y'all agree, or you want me to write it anyway? Just write it anyway. So sodium bicarb. Injection. So in citrate, um, like an anticoagulant and blood transfusions. Blood transfusions. Acids. Um, because they contain your bicarbs, so they help increase it. I wonder how many you'd actually have to take, though. A lot of things like this, they list, but you'd have to take an insanely excessive amount. Yeah, but these could be people who are, like, take those, like, on a, like all the time. I would assume that's what caused yeah. it. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. I can't take antacids. My mom, uh, Tums are antacids, aren't they? My mom yeah. loves she used to eat them all the time. I'm like, mom, you're not even like. <laughs> so vomiting from um, your hydrogen chloride loss, prolonged vomiting leads to alkalosis to loss of hydrogen atoms. So diarrhea is acidosis, and vomiting is alkalosis. Yes. Okay. Diarrhea, acidosis, and then vomiting, alkalosis. Those I used to miss. Them. I could do uh, yeah. that. I could figure out what they were, but I could never remember which ones were. Potassium depletion. 
the metabolic one sucked because I, I was trying to do, you know, those people that talk about, which I mean, I know that the higher the alkaline, you know, water you drink, it's more better for you. Uh huh. But I guess it's not always the case for certain people because I tried doing that and oh my gosh, I was constantly sick and I even tried to slowly get into it uh-huh. and I still, it would make me so nauseous and I was told it's because, um, it changes the the level in your gastric juices in your stomach. Uh-huh. And so that's what causes people to get nauseous. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. If I take iron supplements, they make me really sick. Yeah, they me just too. they just sicken me so bad and it so I mean like for those that like can drink that stuff, it's like I hey, go for it. You can like my husband, my kids, because I would buy like those those big old, you know, those ones, those big old container ones? Uh-huh. And, dude, it was making me so ill. It was bad. Like, it was so bad that my body was saying, give me soda to make it acidic again. Dang. Like, you know, yeah, when you're fine, craving think- Coke like that so bad to make you feel better? Yeah. yeah. It sucks. Hey, mine, I always, like, what, like, when I start drinking water a lot, I always want lemon juice. And so I wonder if that's the same thing. Could be. Like, wanting to drink it straight out of the bottle. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, because that's how it would make me feel. And I was just nauseous, and I felt like, how do you say, like, I, I don't know. It was, like, a weird it's feeling. Like, I felt like my body was real numb, too. It was just so numb. I didn't even feel like I was alive, if that made any sense. Dang. Yeah, yeah. I can drink, yeah, I can drink water with lemon or cucumber or something. Like that. Water, it makes my stomach really sick, too. So I just drink just... Um, just whatever, just like regular water, tap water, whatever water. I just uh-huh. stick to that. I can't do that alkaline water. My uh, my son's dad really likes those too. The alkaline water. Mhm. And don't get me wrong, they're real good. Like they, I mean, it's like. You know, I guess, like, water does have, like, a sense of taste when you're used to drinking it out of top water or something, and you switch to that. It's, like, you can taste the difference. Does that make sense? Even, like, with, like, filter waters and stuff, you could taste that difference, and it felt like when you, or the way it tasted, tasted with alkaline water, it was, like, literally had no taste, whatever. Yeah. So, like, after we started buying that, the kids just couldn't drink anything, any other kind of water, so... I still buy it, but I just drink out of the tap water because it's the only thing I can. Yeah, stomach. Nothing sicken me. That's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy how different people can be. I forgot to put the compensations in. Um, so metabolic acidosis, um, hyperventilation. And then for alkalosis, so these are the compensations, um, meaning this is what, like, puts you back on track. So these would be, like, your symptoms, right? Like, like how I explained with the whole... Yes, because your body's trying to fix it. So if you start hyperventilating, then your body's trying to fix metabolic acidosis. But if you are, like, uh, hypoventilating, then your body's trying to um, fix your metabolic alkalosis. Okay. Maybe that's why I felt like I was dead. I was, like, like I said, I was, like, oh. (laughs) Yeah, probably so. And so, and we should probably write out our lab findings overall, because we talked about them up there, but real quick, we'll put, so for metabolic acidosis, what's your pH? In in acidosis, your pH would decrease. Good job. How about, um, how about your bicarb? we talked about is what?
Okay, so decreased pH, your bicarbs are decreased. Decreased. And your PCO2? Increased. So decreased pH, bicarbs, CO2, and PCO2. So those are decreased too, but that's because they go opposite her. Oh, okay. No, because we're doing metabolic right now, right? They can either be... I thought it, they could either be normal or increased. Is that not right? <laughs> what What I do you mean? The carbon changes? Yeah, your carbon dioxide for... Decreased. In uh, metabolic acidosis? Yeah. Um, oh, dang it. Hold on. I got a note here somewhere. If, if it was even in this book that I wrote it. Which I didn't even write it in here. Okay, so I had made a note because I remember those questions. Uh -huh. Dang it, I sure wish I knew where I put that notebook at. Okay, so I remember if it was metabolic acidosis, your pH was low, your um, bicarbonate was low, uh -huh. and then your... Um, your, uh, dang it, um, what is that thing PCO2? called? Your, yeah, your, that one, the one for your lungs. Uh-huh. Would be, um, I think it was low. Yeah, it would be low. Yeah. Yep, it's saying low here, too. Yeah, it would be <laughs> low, and then if it was metabolic alkalosis, then they, they would all be high. Now, it's when it's respiratory Oh, and yes. Normal, okay. That's when it's like up and down, like they're both opposite. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll get back to that. Okay, so they are all decreased. So pH decreased, bicarb decreased, and your PCO2. Decreased or slightly decreased, right? Yeah. Decreased. And now for metabolic acidosis, or I'm sorry, alkalosis. What's your pH? Increase. Um, increased. Increased. Your bicarb? Decreased. For uh, alkalosis? For alkalosis. alkalosis. So your pH is increased, your bicarb is increased. It's increased. Yeah. Yep. And how about your PCO2? For metabolic alkalosis? For metabolic alkalosis. I don't know. It's going to increase. Yep. Increase. I'll put all increase for metabolic alkalosis and all decrease. For metabolic acidosis. And then we've got respiratory. So we can do respiratory acidosis. So we have an excess of what? So our PCO2 will be increased. Yep, so a carbon dioxide excess, which is your increased PCO2.
and your pH would be decreased, right? Yes. Because it's acidic. So your acidosis is what shows that you have a decreased pH, and then your respiratory is your increased carbon dioxide. Or I'm sorry, it just goes opposite of your pH. So if your your carbon dioxide is high, um, then it's acidosis, and if it's low, it's alkalosis. Because your bicarbs go with your pH, and your your carbon dioxide goes in, like opposite of your pH. So emphysema. And uh, we looked it up earlier, and it's an issue with the um, those little alveolar sacs. Some of them, um, they weaken over time and burst, and so you have bigger air sacs instead of a bunch of little ones. Pneumonia. And like rebreathing air from a paper bag. Um, blankets and stuff can sometimes do it too. Um, I think one of the one of the theories for um, for SIDS was that kids were babies were getting respiratory acidosis from like breathing the same air in and out of their blanket if it was up on their face. And now your fixes going to be what? Hypo hypoventilation. Or causes hypoventilation. Since a compensatory, I guess it doesn't have one like um, is your metabolic, your op, your compensation for metabolic is going to be respiratory, and your compensation for respiratory is going to be metabolic. So the metabolic ones had either hyperventilation or hypoventilation, but your respiratory is going to be like renal thing. And so either an increase, the increase of um, hydrogen ion excretion or um, bicarbonate reabsorption. Yeah, so what is going on is that's what the kidney is trying to do. The kidney is trying to retain the hydrogen ion and not lose them. And no, no, wait, wait. They're losing hydrogen ions. So they're releasing all the hydrogen ions um, out and they're trying to keep the bicarbonate. There you go. That's a good way to put it. And lab findings. So what's our pH for respiratory acidosis? Low. Low, because it goes opposite. pH decrease. Um, how about your um, your CO2 and PCO2? They, they, they increase. Yep, increase. Well, I guess I'll write them the same way. So I put pH, bicarb. So your bicarb is what? Your bicarb is increased. Increase. And your CO2 and PCO2 are in. Only your pH is decreased, respiratory acidosis. Respiratory alkalosis. What's going on there? That's when you have a um, deficient in um, carbon dioxide. Correct. 
CO2. And that can be caused by hyperventilation. So it looks like these are more like hypoventilation in general, like your emphysema, you're not getting enough air, pneumonia, you're struggling to breathe, rebreathing the same air, you're not getting a good amount of oxygen. Respiratory alkalosis, we're doing hyperventilation. Um, and it can also be seen in early poisoning. So what is the, the common denominator with the salicylate poisoning? It causes alkalosis. Well, you see it in metabolic acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. So your late salicylate oh. poisoning causes metabolic, metabolic acidosis. And then um, the early causes respiratory alkalosis. Sorry, when I asked that question, I thought that they were on the same one too. Either alkalosis or... So early for respiratory alkalosis and late is metabolic acidosis. Your compensatory um, is renal and you decrease your hydrogen excretion. So this is kidneys retain hydrogen at, um, ion. And so your pH is going to be Increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. Your HCO3? Decrease. Okay, increase or decrease? Decrease. For respiratory alkalosis? Yeah, your bar carbonate um, decreases. It looks like your bicarbs increase for um, for both your for both respiratory. Really, for respiratory alkalosis, okay. So it's increased. Yep, for both the respiratory and then metabolic alkalosis. The only one with a decreased um, bicarb is metabolic acidosis. Oh. So we got bicarbs increase too, and what's our CO2? Decrease. Yep. So decrease. And then, um, yeah, I think we definitely need to go over the, um, the um, like, false positive or negative the things that can affect your, your lab results. Erroneous results. What causes erroneous results for, for blood gases? Air bubbles. Air and bubbles. And what's the other one? 
what special, uh, do y'all do y'all know how they're done? Lead gases? Yeah. They're oh. in a syringe, because I've done a venous blood gas uh -huh. at work. But with the venous blood gases, you just need to put it in a regular syringe, and it has to be in a, they need at least, I think it was two or three milliliters. Mm -hmm. And then if it's going to be arterial, it has to be in, is it heparin? Uh-huh, heparin heparinized syringe? Yeah. How about, can you draw that one and then go draw a bunch of other patients and then go back to the lab? Like, what no. do you mean? Like, can you draw a, a, a blood gas and then do labs? No, I think you have to do the labs first and then you do the blood gases after. No, no, no. I mean, um, like, let's say you get your blood gases from the patient, get everything from the patient you need. Can you go finish drawing patients and then go back to the lab? No, you have to, like, go take it straight to the lab. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're all, like, stat tests. And so samples sitting more than 30 minutes that are not on ice can also affect your blood gas analysis. So time and um, temperature. So for bubbles, what do bubbles do? I think this is the one that I got a bunch of questions on that I had a hard time with, is what bubbles I think do. it increases your O2. Well, it's because like when you read the stinking answers, it sometimes don't even make sense. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm sitting there staring at it over and over and I'm like, and then I start overthinking and then I'm like, oh my gosh, this is retarded. Oh, and with this, it's so easy to overthink blood gases. So increase is pH and PO2. So increase pH and oxygen. And decrease in CO2. And yep, your decrease is gonna be your PO2. Because the bubble adds more oxygen, right? Right. And now your time and temperature. It's going to um, be opposite. So right. your, should I write it decreased and then increased on this one or should I keep it increased and then decreased and then just? Uh, keep it the same. Keep it the same? Yeah. So increase. It's gonna be your PCO2 or carbon dioxide. And then decrease is going to be your pH and oxygen. So just remember, um, if it's if it's not like stat and not um, not on an in an ice flurry, um, then it's opposite results what the bubbles will do to it. But usually if they ask a question about it, it's like about the bubbles. Someone got a bubble in there, you know, what, what is it your pH look like or what's your carbon dioxide or your oxygen look like or which ones are increased or which ones are decreased. It's usually bubbles. And so what the book's saying is to remember pH as Phoenicia 
And so Phoenicia flies through the air but falls after sitting. So air bubbles, increase pH, falls after sitting, decrease pH. There has to be a better name for than Phoenicia. Fanny. Hmm. Maybe Phoenix. I like Phoenix. Flies through the air. Balls sitting. And then Paco, they're do, she's do, they're doing Paco for for uh, PCO two and carbo for bicarbs. So Paco falls from the air but rises after sitting. What page is that? This one's on 120. And to remember which one uh, is which, so remember Phoenix, I actually, Phoenix makes it perfect because Phoenix is fly. So Phoenix flies, and then Paco, it shows that instead of like falling off the chair, he, um, he falls and dies, so he has to go back up to heaven. <laughs> That's dark. <laughs> it is. I don't know. So air bubbles in a syringe decrease the PCO2 and prolonged sitting increases it. Oxygen is simple. Exposure to air causes an increase and prolonged sitting causes air to decrease, which, you know, makes fairly good sense. Or you can say oxygen follows pH. Oh, you can do, so you got your pH here and you got your O here. Wasn't Phoenix P-H-O-E? What? Isn't it Phoenix P-H-O-E? Oh, that's probably why it said I spelled it. Oh, yeah, so then that's perfect. So you get your pH and then your O for oxygen. That was a good one, Mish. Oh. I know you probably weren't thinking of that when, when you said Phoenix, but that worked out really well. Yeah.
the next one is your acid base status. So um, Phoenix and Paco hop on the seesaw and begin to play up and down, up and down. So on a seesaw between your Phoenix, your pH, and your Paco, which is your, P your PCO2. Um, when they are opposite, then um, the status is respiratory. Oh, we kind of, we just, yeah, we talked about that with it. And then um, Phoenix tires of playing with Paco and runs off to join Carbo, who is on a swing. Both go up and both go down always together. So when the pH and bicarbs are either both increased or both decreased, the status is metabolic. So pH and bicarbs go together, metabolic, and when your PCO2 and your pH are opposite, then it's respiratory. I think it's just a little different way to say what we had up here. <laughs> 